Lord God, we thank you that we are never neglected by you, my Lord. God, I thank you, my Lord Jesus, that we are always your priority, my Lord. God, and I pray, Jesus, that we would see to it that you would be our priority, my Lord. God, I pray for each person that's in this room, God, those who could hear me under the sound of my voice, my Lord Jesus, whether it be here or online, my Lord Jesus, but God, that we would get to a point in our walk that we don't walk with you to get. <clears throat> That we don't walk with you to gain a blessing. That we don't walk with you to gain this. That we don't walk with you to gain that. That we don't worship you in front of others, God, so that our status looks good, Lord. That we don't wear our Jesus T, my Lord God, to get the like on our post, my Lord Jesus. But God, that we expect or desire nothing more just to fall down at your feet, my Lord Jesus. God, for without you, my Lord God, we would all indeed be dead, my Lord. So Jesus, help us to get to that point. Our work on our hearts that need to be worked on, my Lord Jesus. Our minds, my Lord God. Our attitudes, our tempers, my Lord Jesus. God, whatever sin it is, my Lord God. Jesus, I ask that you would begin to expose it to us, my Lord Jesus. And then that we would have the faith in you, God, to know that you're going to work it out of us, my Lord God. Jesus, help us to get to that point, my Lord God, that all we want is you. God, that we would realize, my Lord Jesus, no amount of fame or popularity or money, Jesus, that no amount of drugs or sex, my Lord Jesus, nothing, my Lord God, is going to fulfill us except you. Lord, help us to just rid ourselves, rid everything about us and in us. God, so that we can truly see who we are in you. And God, I thank you, my Lord Jesus, that the person that sometimes we think we are, my Lord God, is the very thing that you're trying to expose to us so that you can show us who in you we truly are. God, we love you, we thank you, and we praise you. And all God's baby said, <clears throat> Amen. So y'all may be seated in the presence of the Lord. He is amazing. And you have worship like that, man. It's, it's just awesome. <clears throat> We're uh, blessed and honored, man, by each and every single person who is here tonight. We are blessed and honored by the uh, mighty men at their challenge. So to God be the glory for each and every single one of you guys. And Man, uh, I don't know about y'all. I don't know about y'all, but I, I was worshiping the Lord just because how they was worshiping. Uh, that was just absolutely awesome. So, uh, so we celebrate that indeed, man. I'm gonna, tonight, man, it's going to be real quick. And ultimately, because I'm going to get them to come back up here at the end. And we're just going to get into some more worship, but also just, just check our hearts. And, and that's what I want us to do tonight. So we're going to come out of Matthew's Gospel, uh, uh, chapter 15. I'm going to come out of verse 8 and 9. And sis, I'm not sure what... Um, what translation... I like it out of here a little bit better. But it says this. These people honor me with their lips, but their hearts are far from me. They worship me in vain. Their teachings are merely human rules. Matthew 15, verses 8 and 9. To me, man, that's some of the most powerful scriptures in the word because Jesus is letting us know man that uh, so many people are going to praise him with their lips so many we're, we're going to get the praises out we're going to get the shouts out we're going to get the amens and the hallelujahs the highest praise but yet he says man that they honor me with their lips but yet their hearts are actually far from me their worship is in vain so it's crazy if you begin to think about it that we could oftentimes and sometimes man we begin to get into worship not because we're worshiping the Lord but because we like a song right there, there's a difference when in worship you have an encounter with Holy Spirit and when you have an encounter with an emotion right because when you have that encounter with the emotion after the song ends and you go to the next one your emotion is over 
But if you have that encounter with Holy Spirit during worship, then the worship doesn't stop, even when the music does. When we have an encounter with, with an emotion, man, we could say all types of things and it sounds good and looks good, especially to others, but yet our hearts are far from Him if we're just having encounters with emotions and never having an encounter with actually Him. Right? So He talks about our heart. Now, I'll never forget in high school, we had a young man, <clears throat> I believe it was the same young man that my... Uh, sister went to prom with but he died at the age of 18 on the football field and many people in their high schools have have similar stories of of young athletes man dying on the fields or on the courts or wherever it may be but he died and he had an undetected heart problem and this happens quite often. A few, few weeks ago, I was doing off-duty security at the reggae concert. And it was absolutely insane. And, and uh, uh, this one lady just straight passed out. So we come running over to her. We're kind of getting her back to it. I called for EMTs to come over and address the situation. She comes to her and she's like, man, I'm, I'm good, I'm good. I'm just going to go ahead and go home, blah, blah, blah. She passed out again. When they began to check her, all, all of her signs, man, they detected something with her heart. So they said, ma'am, we're actually not letting you go home. You're actually going to come with us on the ambulance to the hospital. Right? We see this day in and day out. People appear to be good at times, but yet there's an underlying heart issue. My dad, who's in great health goes to the doctor and they're like, man, holy crap, we got to do a uh, triple bypass heart surgery on you. As they got him on the table, they come out and say, we got to change it from a triple to a quadruple bypass heart surgery on him. He appeared to be in good health, but yet his heart does the very thing that was ultimately going to kill him. And if you think about it, oftentimes it's the same thing in the spiritual world. We can look at someone and just automatically assume that they have it all together. That they're this type of Christian. They're that type of follower. They're just absolutely amazing. They're Jesus T and they only listen to Jesus music and they speak wonderful Christianese. Right? So, so we just believe that they are this thing and they are that thing. That their faith is it. But yet, truth be told, Scripture is telling us that people like that in every church, that people like that in every community, that people like that around the world praise Him, but yet their hearts are far from Him. So they look good, but yet Scripture is letting us know that they have a spiritual heart condition. See, in the physical, we almost have an advantage, if you would, opposed to the spiritual when it comes to the heart. In the physical, I could have somebody hook up things to my chest and they could begin to read my heart and see exactly what it is that my heart's doing and or the lack thereof of what it is that my heart is doing. And as Christians, we will monitor all types of things in our walk. But oftentimes, we neglect or we ignore the heart. We'll monitor our behavior, we'll monitor our language, we'll monitor the shows we watch, the way we dress, the movies we'll go to, the games we play, the music we listen to, right? We'll, we'll monitor all of those things, but yet we will ignore monitoring our heart. And then what we often like to do is we love to put the monitoring of our heart on someone else. Right, so what we're going to begin to do is we're going to call out our family and our friends to, to make sure that I'm doing right. We're going to get our loved ones to make sure that I'm doing right. We even call people accountability partners. You're my accountability partner. Ultimately, what I'm saying, if I say to you, you're my accountability partner, is I don't want to take responsibility for self, so I'm placing responsibility upon you. It's your job now to take care of me. Right? And, and, and I know some people are like, oh, we're supposed to have accountability departments. We're supposed to be accountable. Yeah. Yeah. And then praise the Lord if you have people who are in your corner. But we are supposed to be accountable. Yeah. Right? So we have to begin <laughs> to grab a hold of this. But we put this responsibility on other people and we want them to fix us. And we want them to keep us straight. I had a, a, a dear Christian brother of mine who fell deep into sin and I'll never forget the time that I was on the phone with him and he blamed me. 
so I, what, why didn't you call me? Because uh, I was with my family, the same spot that you should have been with yours. Right? So we have a responsibility to be accountable to self. The number one person who is responsible to monitor your heart is you. It is us in Holy Spirit because truth be told, before anybody else knows that we are drifting, we know we are drifting. Right? Right? I have not, and I, listen to me when I tell you in Jesus' name, pray for me, because I've sinned and I sin. Okay? And I, I can never, I cannot stand up here and tell you that one time that I sinned, did I not know I was sinning. I did not wake up all of a sudden and go, oh hell. <laughs> what? <laughs> what did I just do? Right? Like, I, I knew, I knew going into the game plan, I was sinning. I knew going into the game plan, I was going to be sinning. But yet I went into the game plan. Right? And, and, and I could pass by my Christian brother on my way to do whatever it is that I'm getting ready to do. And he could be like, how's everything going? Everything is great, brother. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Praise the Lord. And he's going to be like, yes, Pastor Frank, man, he's on it. <laughs> right? But yet here I am unannounced to him. I'm going into this game plan of sin. Why? Because I know when I'm drifting. Everybody else doesn't. Why? Because we can fake the funk to others. But when it comes to a heart, we can never fake the funk to ourselves. Have you ever lied to yourself? Yeah. And you know it's a lie. You're like, you know what, man? It's, it's that they, they deserve that. And you know in your mind, you're like, man, they really didn't. But like, you're lying to yourself. You're, you're, you're boosting yourself up, right? Like, like, it's crazy we do this. But my goodness, we do. Right? So we can fake the funk to others, but we can never fake the funk to ourselves. And especially, we can never fake the funk to him. It's Jesus. It is Jesus who said, it's not the things that come out of a person that make him dirty. Right? Or the things that go in, it's the things that come out. Yeah. Right? So we have to grab a hold. It's not the things that is, that's gonna, we're going to put in the food-wise and all that stuff that's going to make us dirty. It's what the things that we're doing is what's going to make us sinful. Right? And it's absolutely insane. He, he goes on, man. He lets us know, man, that uh, uh, out of the heart is what a person speaks. Out of the heart, he lets us know, comes evil thoughts. Comes sinfulness, right? Like this, this is crazy. When we begin to look at the heart, man, the heart is, is so, uh, it, it's such a, a mysterious thing about each and every single one of us, right? And... And the truth is, that's the problem when we begin to get into an, or, and or we tell somebody, follow your heart. What should I do? Follow your heart. You will never hear me tell you to follow your heart. Amen. Because oftentimes our heart cannot decide what is righteousness and unrighteousness. Right. Right? So we can't follow our heart. We have to follow the Lord. Jeremiah, the prophet, said, talking about the heart, who can understand it? But he's like, pull this thing out of me. Like, like who could understand this freaking thing? Right? Like, like this sucks. Right? And it, it's crazy. We try our best to understand it, but truth be told, we can't. We can never understand it. And then let's just say, for the sake of the conversation, let's say we begin to break down the heart and we kind of begin to form an understanding of the heart. You can't control it. Have you ever just wigged out just like that? Being cool, calm, and collected. Maybe things getting on your nerves and all of a sudden your kids do something wrong or this person does something wrong. Somebody cuts you off one too many times and you just plain blow up. <laughs> right? I never have. <laughs> Praise the Lord. I'm holy. Right? But like, like it's crazy because this happens, right? Like, just like that. Something comes over us, man, or, or a thought evil, right? Like, have you ever thought evil things, mean things, hateful things? Right? And yet then we think to ourselves and we're going, man, that, that's coming out of my heart? Oh. 
But yet, that's what he tells us. Which shows us even more the importance as Christians that we have to monitor our hearts in the Lord. That we have to be on guard and alert so that we do not begin to drift. An unmonitored heart in the spiritual is like that volcano, man, that everyone's overlooking because it hasn't erupted in years. But yet it's getting ready to, right? And, and it's crazy because the things that we don't bring to Him, but we want to keep to ourselves, we try to keep hidden inside of our hearts, are the very things that are eventually going to come out and destroy us wherever it is that we are. I'm reminded in Scripture, man, and He says, I will pull up your skirt and reveal you. And will. Woo! Right? We think this thing that we're trying to keep hidden won't show up in church. That it won't show up at home. That it won't show up in the workplace. Or it won't show up in our communities. It won't show up in our safe houses. But my God, it will. And it's, it's all due to a lack of monitoring our hearts. Our hearts are in everything that we do. It is in every conversation. It's in every relationship. It's, it's how we become intimate with our spouses. It's how we lead. It's how we parent. How we confront. How we interact. How we act, react, and respond. Hello, Christians. Right? How do we act, react, and respond? It's crazy. But yeah, he says that we'll do it out of our heart. Every single day we have to have the boldness and the courage to ask Almighty God for one, to watch over my heart. For two, to expose my heart. And this is where it sucks. This is when it begins to get hard. Because it's easy and safe to ask Him to watch over our hearts. Lord, just, just watch over my heart, Lord. And God, I thank You, Lord, for for just, just leading, guiding, and directing me. God, just, just watch over me. Just, you know, just, 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 just watch over me, Lord. I just don't know what to say. My heart's crazy. Right? So, so that thing is easy. It's a totally different ball game when we begin to ask the Lord to expose our hearts. That's hard. Yeah. That hurts. To ask Him to watch over it, safe. To ask Him to expose it, is hard. And I love the word expose, right? Like, like I could have said, Lord, show me my heart. And to me, when we ask him to begin to show you your heart, I picture him going, okay, hey, uh, check this out, Frank. This is what's wrong. <laughs> right? And you're going, oh my gosh, look, is that me? <laughs> it is. Right? I don't, don't worry about it though, man. Like nobody else in here knows that. And hallelujah. <laughs> praise me indeed. Thank you. That's the highest praise. You're right. Right? But when we say expose, that's him going, next slide. Next slide. Look at Frank. <laughs> right? And everyone's like, he did that? Yeah, he's like, oh, just wait. <laughs> Slide 10 is amazing. You know what I'm saying? Like, like, when we ask him to expose it, I just picture it just plain out being exposed. If I'm showing, just to get graphic, if I'm showing somebody myself, then I'm just showing that person myself. But if I'm going to expose myself, man, you're out there showing everybody yourself. And I picture that when we ask the Lord to expose our hearts. Not just show me. Lord, if you just show me, it's so easy to overlook that. It's so easy to go, well, I can't remember him showing me that slide. But when you expose it to the world, now you're quick to go, oh... Lord, I got to change that. Yeah. Right? And, but here's the crazy thing. We will ask him to expose our hearts and then we'll get offended by him when he exposes our hearts. Oh, we'll ask him to expose our hearts then we get butt hurt when he exposes our hearts. Yeah. It makes absolutely no sense that we ask him to do something when he does it, then we're offended. 
But it's because oftentimes our praises of him come off of our lips, but our hearts are far from him. So when we ask him to watch over us and to expose my heart, Lord, it sounds good. But truth be told, we don't want it. And we know this on the way we react when he acts. Or we know this by the way we respond to the way he responded to our request. Lord, expose my heart. Okay. And then we get all tore up over this thing. But yet it's the very thing that we need. We have to be sincere in asking for both of these things. Lord, watch over me. I know me better than anybody else knows me. You know my desires. You know my righteous desires. And you know my sinful desires. And Lord, I am asking you to watch over me. And then I'm going to ask you, Lord, to expose me if I begin to feed my sinful desires more than I'm feeding my righteous desires. Expose my heart. Right? So we have to ask him these things out of sincere. A sincere request. Lord, show us. And the amazing thing is, is when we are sincere about that, you know what he'll do? He will show us. But he's never going to show us to destroy us. He's only going to show us to upbuild us. So he'll show us. Then he'll lead us. He'll guide us. He'll direct us. He'll teach us. He's never going to go, look what you're doing. Now figure out how not to do that. He's going to go, look what you're doing. Now let me teach you how to withstand from this. Let me teach you the proper way to walk through this. Let me teach you what you do when temptations are coming at you out of every angle. Well, Lord, I just don't know what to do. I do. Walk with me and I'm going to make you a table in the presence of your enemies. Lord, I, oh my gosh, I just don't know. Don't worry about it. I'm going to lead God direction. Your, your cup will indeed be runneth over. You've just got to allow me to teach you. See, I'm reminded in Scripture, man, he tells us that the Holy Spirit's our teacher, right? That he, he teaches us to withstand from all ungodliness. Not some of ungodliness, not a little of ungodliness, but all ungodliness. And I said it before with, with this particular thing. It's not just what he says, but it's also what he didn't say. And what I mean by that is he said, Holy Spirit will teach you how to withstand from all ungodliness. Or, in other words, Holy Spirit will also teach you how to walk only in godliness. If he will teach us how to walk, uh, uh, to withstand or all ungodliness, he's going to teach us how to walk in godliness. Right? So it's absolutely awesome. So he says, allow me to teach you. I will show you. I will lead you. I will direct you. I will guide you. I will teach you how to replace the wickedness, the evil, the, the bad habits. Everything that I will expose to you in your heart, I will then show you a better way. I will teach you how to be holy. I will teach you how to be righteous. I will teach you how indeed to walk upright. And he says, and it will be by my hand that I will begin to mold you, to, this is Holy Spirit talking, to look like the Father's Son. He says, but it's going to be me. See, we get so twisted when we think we have to do it. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. We have to do this and I have to do that. And I'll never forget when I was a uh, correctional officer, I had a gentleman. And I've shared the story. I'll go real quick. But I, I shared the story before of uh, uh, he was um, into the satanic occult. And somehow the Lord allowed us to begin to develop a friendship, right? And uh, uh, he would always come to me and just talk to me about life. And I'll never forget the day he came to me and he says to me, and this is, uh, this is just how awesome God is. He comes to me and he says, um, um, Lassen, they're refusing me my satanic Bible. Now, I know the law, 
and I know that I have a right to have my re reading material, especially for my religious views. Which we can't stop him from having a satanic Bible. So I told him, I said, man, I said, I'll tell you what, I'll make a deal with you. So the jail at that time was playing Passion of the Christ. So I told him, I said, man, if you go to the movie tonight, when you come back, your satanic Bible will be on your bed. Right? And he was like, all right, sweet, deal. So indeed, he goes to watch Passion of the Christ. I got his satanic Bible, placed it on his bunk. He comes back from the movie, and he walks in. I was in uh, A-Pod. He walks into A-Pod, looks over at me, gave me the thumbs up, and just walked into a cell. A-Pod's open cells. And uh, so he goes in there. Not five minutes later is he coming up walking with this Bible. And I'm like, oh, Lord, have mercy. Here we go. And the fight is on. <laughs> right? I just knew. I just knew that we were going to, in the spiritual, be throwing blows. And I was ready to knock this sucker out. <laughs> right? Jesus. Jesus name. Yeah. Right? And he comes and he lays that Bible down in front of me. And he goes, I don't need this anymore. I get goosebumps. Look at God. Yeah. Oh my God. And then he begins to have his mother send him Christian material. Yeah. Right? It's awesome. But I want, and I say all that to get to here. He says to me, but Frank, or Lassen, I love to do this. And I love to do this. And I love this. And I love this about the world. How in the world am I going to stop that? And I told him, I said, well, here, man, here's the amazing thing. You don't. Amen. He will. Your desires will begin to change. Your hopes will begin to change. The things you like will begin to change. But it's as you draw closer to him because he's going to be the one to change you. I'm not going to tell you what you can and cannot listen to. I'm not going to tell you what you can and cannot partake in in your walk right now. But the moment you begin to walk with the Father, now I have a responsibility to say, hey man, keep it tight. But before my responsibility to tell you to keep it tight, you have a responsibility. We have to monitor our heart. And what Holy Spirit's desire is in exposing our heart is to cause us to have a heart like the Son. Right? So this is what I want us to do as my worship team begins to come back up here. We're going to have a heart test. And then we're going to open up the altar. We could pray whether where you're sitting and or if you wanted to come up here. But what are the recent thoughts that you've had? The recent words that you've said? The recent actions that you have taken? And in those thoughts and in those words and in those actions, how did and what did it reveal about your heart. Now, the kicker is we could lie to our neighbor, we could lie to ourselves, but the kicker is I, I'm not talking about the thoughts that you're willing to share. I'm talking about the ones that are even embarrassing to you. That you want to keep hidden. What about, and, and I'm not talking about the words, man, that you say because you know others are listening. But the words that you say about others when only you're listening. What's it exposing about your heart? What actions? And I'm not talking about the actions that you took that make you look good in front of others. But I'm talking about your heart's actions behind some of your actions. See, I could do stuff in public and make it look good. As a matter of fact, I was in a class today and Lord, pray for me, because the math that is in this traffic crash class, I'm just ready to walk away from everything and just like leave. Lord, leave. make me leave, Lord. You know what I mean? Like, like it's horrible. But I say that to say this. I got a call. Somebody needed help in the food pantry. Okay? Now, my first initial thought was, I'm in this class. Aww. And all I could hear is Holy Spirit going, dude, you want an excuse to get away from the math for a second? I'm giving you an excuse to get away from the math for a second, you idiot. You know what I'm saying? But I say that to say my initial heart wasn't, yes, I get, I get to feed somebody. 
I had my little boy with me today. Right? Six years old. And I said, hey man, we got to go here and uh, uh, um, feed somebody real quick. Yes! Daddy, can, can I help load the bags? Daddy, can I help bring them out to the car? Who is it? How many people is in their house? How much food do they need? Right? And I thought to myself, faith like a child. He was eager. Right? And now when the man pulled up, I looked like the good guy. Pastor, man, I appreciate you so much. Hey, bro, no problem. Huh? I got you, soldier. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. <laughs> right? And the whole time I'm going, my goodness, I wonder what they're teaching in this class that I know absolutely nothing about. <laughs> you know, how much more is my head going to spend? But yet, my son is like, yes, here he is. Now we get to load these bags, right? Why? Because at that moment, even more so, did he have the heart of the Father? And I had the fart, the, the fart, I had the fart <laughs> of a 42 year old man in that thing. I had, <laughs> I had the heart of a man who was thinking more about self than I was about a family. So I'm not talking about just things that make you look good, but what's the action of the heart behind the action you did? Let's seek the Lord in that. Ask him to expose the things that need to be exposed. Lord, I want to look like you. I don't want to be the person that praises you, but yet my heart is far from you. So Lord, watch over us. Indeed, you know us better than we know ourselves, Lord. And again, you know our righteous desires and you know our sinful desires so we ask that you watch over us we ask that you lead us God we ask that you expose us expose us here tonight expose what needs to be exposed my Lord Jesus so that we don't have the heart of the man but that we would have the heart of the son so Lord, expose what needs to be exposed. Heal what needs to be healed. Deliver us from what we need to be delivered from. And Lord, allow us, help us, show us, teach us, direct us how indeed to monitor our hearts in you, Lord, so that you can mold us into the son, into the daughter, into the warrior that you are calling each and every single one of us to be. And Lord, in this battle, allow our heart not to get in the way, but allow our heart in you to continue to make the way, to fight, to be the voice for the voices as our praises from our lips are equal with our heart in you. If there's anybody in here who don't know Jesus and you're desiring to do so, simply open up your heart right where you're sitting. Lord, we thank you for those people right now, my Lord God, who are desiring to know you like never before. Maybe they're a Christian, my Lord Jesus, who have known you, Lord, but they've realized that their heart has been far from you, God. So I thank you for those right now, God, who are making the decision to come back. Lord, expose us. Expose the new, expose the old, my Lord Jesus. God, allow us, teach us, help us to walk this thing out with you. We have heart issues, Lord. But God, get our hearts in a healthy condition tonight. And all God's baby said, Church, stand to your feet as we get back into worship. If you want prayer, man, you could come up to the altar. Or you could stay in your seat or in the aisle that you're in. Seek